My name's Ruth, I'm a designer for theatre and performance. Um, I tend to design the sets and the costumes for different shows. I tend to start with the script itself, getting a really good grasp on that script, really reading through it. Um, I tend to do a scene breakdown, which is where I make a little table so that I know which act and scene and page I'm looking at. And then I've got different columns going on. I've got anything that's described for setting or scenery that's in the play text, any characters that are in that scene and what their entrances and exits might be, any sound or lighting notes that the script gives. Between uh, my team and the stage management team, that becomes really important for having to source things and what you need when. Costume, any notes that are given as to what actors might be wearing, whether they've got costume changes as well, that's a really important um, practical thing because if they're in one thing for uh, scene 17 and they've got to be in a completely different outfit for scene 18 we need to think about how that happens senses of mood that i start to get as i read the scene colors that i start to sense as i'm reading a screen that might just be stuff that i'm getting for myself finally i have a bit of a notes and a description <laughs> column so that then um as i'm looking at each scene um if i start to get a sense of how i'd want it to be staged um uh, I start to put that in, but I also might just put notes from the uh, script as to what's actually happening. Usually I have to do a little bit more research into things. So for Mamets, for example, um, I started to look a little bit about the Battle of Mamets Wood and what actually happened at that time, like how they were built, what conditions were like in them. It's really important to interrogate that and make sure that you're giving, when you get to actually making the set, that you're giving your audience the right information basically you're helping them with the visuals the set and the costume you're helping them to understand the world of the play apart from reading i also get visual images together so i start to look at pictures i look at other designers set designers whose work might influence me so particularly one that i looked for for Mamets is ralph coltai who uh, he was a designer who used a lot of um, kind of stripped back to the essence of a material really so he was very interested in form and shape and um, sort of the, the quality that a material such as um, rusty metal might have and what would happen if you put that onto a stage. And I was really interested by how actually this, this peaceful wood gets really transformed by the horror of war. I found one image um, which was a shell exploding and all this soil going up in the air. Um, and that shape was really interesting to me, just how that gets created. And thinking about Colti and how he looks at the essence of materials, I started to look at how you could perhaps use sort of rods of metal and have them uh, arranged in a different way so you kind of get a sense that you're in a forest, but also it's this horrific forest that's been mutated by the warfare that's going on in it and that then the actual sculpture that you're trying to create out of that reflects this explosion of the shell but it's a moment that's frozen in time. So once I've started to uh, get some visual ideas from Pinterest I start to then try and translate my ideas down onto paper. I tend to do that by drawing and sketching and doodling. I might do a little bit of writing and just write down the odd word that's handy. It's really important to notice that for this part in the process, it's not about how well you can draw. It's about you just getting what's in your brain down to on, onto a piece of paper. Because um, you might think you've got it all sorted in your head and that you might have all these details. And then you put it down on paper and you go, oh, actually, no, that's not what I meant. That's what you start to do with the sketches. You start to just develop and evolve your ideas. I personally start by trying to do a bit of sort of replication of some of the images that I found and start to get a sense of. So if I've looked at um, a trench or soldiers walking across a field, I'll start to just try and get sort of sketches of that together and I'll start to think about the shadows of the soldiers or what what else is in this field? Is it an empty field? Is it a chaotic field? Is what's going on? Then I start to think about, okay, what do I actually want to have in the set? What shapes do I want? I start very basic, so I just start by sort of getting these, the big sort of basic forms and basic shapes down first and make sure that I've got that right. And then I start to add a little bit more detail. So I might start to think about sort of texture, um, shadow, um, 
what other little bits of scenery I want to add which might give a clue as to where we are or what's happening. So this is a model box for um, my version of Mamets, uh, which is in a black box space. Um, it's to 1 to 25 scale, so um, 1 centimetre is 25 centimetres. It's really important as a designer to move from sketches and ideas to a 3D form. For you, uh, for the director, for the rest of the creative team, you're basically, you're building the set as you want it, but you're doing it in miniature so that you're able to play around with ideas, you're able to see what works in 3D using shape and form. The audience would have begun on this side. Um, this is where the trenches would have been. They'd have been watching it from here. Then uh, as part of the immersive experience, they'd have walked across the no man's land, experienced that, come back down, taken their seats here. And now they're looking on the clearing in Mammoth's Wood, which is where act three happens. I've started to work out what angles I want, where I want things to go, how I want that shape to happen. Um, but also now that I've been able to add a figure to it, I'm also starting to be able to realise how the actors can interact with it, how easy and hard it is. I've had to think about do I need to make sure that they can get in and out very easily, how their form relates to the 3D form that I've made here. And the model encourages you to think about details that you perhaps wouldn't consider at sketch stage so I knew that I wanted um, quite a rucked up and exploded earth almost as though this uh, these sort of stakes have come out of it but then once you're starting to put it into the model you're really starting to have to nail down what you want to do in terms of colour in terms of texture exactly how you want that to look um, and it's really really important to get that right here because basically how you get it done here is then how it's replicated and how it's going to end up looking for um, as the final project on the stage. So that's taking you through uh, the process of uh, design for Mamet. So from the reading of the play, the initial research, getting some sketches down, going from pictures to a 3D form in the model, um, and then all of that goes together and you present it on day one of rehearsals. And from there, that's when the fun really begins.